So I'm going to select the Amazon Linux 2 AMI, the first one, and stick with the T2 micro type. And here I select two AC2 instances and I stick with the no preference. So I click add storage and I'm going to stick all the settings with the default. In here, I'm going to create a new security group called, for example, EFS dash test. Copy it down here. So basically, it's just the SSH connection and review launch, and we will have two EC2 instances here. So I'm going to hit launch. And for the key, I have one key right now. I used this one before, so I'm going to use that one. So going back to the EFS tab, so let's hit refresh here to see what is going on. It is still creating. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back later. Basically, with the create file system, I can create multiple file systems with different names and I can expand these EFS names here. So the details here, you can see this is going to be the file system ID. This number is actually important. Here down here, we can see the DNS name. This is the file system ID and this is your region. I mean, we have the EFS dot and your region and then Amazon AWS dot com. And we can see this is distributed across multiple availability zones. And now we can see the IP addresses. Basically, when you're building EC2 instances from each of these availability zones, you can see these IP addresses as a target if you have access to the security group. And you can mount this file system as an NFS mount to the Linux machines. So there is no limitation. I mean, there is a limitation. and I mean, there should be a limitation. But Amazon is saying it's petabyte, it's a large amount of the capacity, so we don't know when we can start using it. One very good documentation here are these links here. If you click here, for example, EC2 mount instructions from local VPC, which is our case right now. If you click here, it will give you some information related to how related to configuration of your Linux machine or Amazon EC2 instance. So you need to basically install a package for Amazon Linux EC2 instances. You need to install Amazon dash EFS utils or for basic Linux machines or Red Hat, for example, you need NFS utils or for the Ubuntu, we need NFS common tool. So first you need to install these ones, which is pretty easy, but you can install with a yum package manager or apt get package manager. And then you just need to create a directory and then mount your file system. So this is the mount command. Your file system is EFS, and this is the ID of your file system to that directory. So this is the, the time that you are using EFS. If you're using native NFS client, then this is the format. And if you configured the storages before in on-prem environment, this is this could be familiar for you. So what I'm going to do is, because I use the, the Amazon AMI, so basically I need to run this command first for installing the EFS util package and then I need to create a directory and then mount the file system to that directory. That's it. So let's do this. So we need to SSH to our Linux machines. So I'm going back to the second tab, which is our EC2 instances. So they're both up and running. Oh, something that happened is I forgot to distribute them across multiple availability zone. So Amazon put the two machines, two EC2 instances on the same availability zone, which is not the way that I want it. I want to just put machines in different availability zones. So I'm going to terminate the second one and I'm going to build another one, just one machine in another availability zone. I don't know, let's say select this one and hit add storage. So I'm basically repeating everything again and I'm going to use the EFS test security group, same idea and the same key. This is just for testing purpose from different availability zones. So right now we have this one, which is running in the US West 2A availability zone and this one, which is pending, it's going to be available soon in US West 2C. So they are two different machines in two different availability zones. And you can see when the public IP addresses are completely different and they should be able to see the EFS file system. And look at your our virtual machines. The first one, it has a private IP address 172.31.31 and 177. And this one, it has 172.31.13.200. If I go back to the EFS tab, so these are both are running right now. So if I go back to EFS and look at the IP addresses, we have 
141.183. So with these private IP addresses, they should be able to see each other. So let's give it a try. For, for the first, uh, first one, I'm going to click on connect. So this is the way that we can connect to this guy. So I'm going to open a terminal in my system. I'm using Mac, so I have terminal. If you are not using Mac, you know what you what to do. You need to use Putty, for example, or other SSH connections. Okay, I found the key. I copied the, this directory, and now I can just paste the command and access to my EC2 instance. So this is the EC2 instance. And what I'm going to do here is basically try to mount the EFS file system to this machine. So one thing that we can do is basically for just checking that we can have name resolution, I can run the host command space and then the FQDN of the EFS file system. So for doing this, let's go back to our EFS tab here. This is the FQDN and I'm trying to copy this one and try to resolve this FQDN from my Linux machine. And you can see I can get the IP address. So 172.31.16.251. So 16.251 is in the US West 2A, which is the EC2 instance is also in the US West 2A. So you can see that they are accessible through the availability zone, through the subnet. So it's like a local layer two access between the EC2 instance and our EFS volume. So let's try to mount it to see if it is working. Well, basically it shouldn't work because of that security group, but we can just give it a try. So let's first install the package. So I'm going to copy this one, going back to my terminal and just paste this one here. So with this one, we are installing this package, amazon-efs-utils. And the, the next step is basically, uh, let me clear my screen to have more space here, uh, create a directory with mkdir command, and I'm going to create an EFS directory, let's say in the root. And because I'm just running with the EC2 user, I need to have permission. So let's put sudo at the very beginning. And now if I run ls-la, I can see that I have EFS directory. I'm just changing the permission to make it much better for uh, other users. So just try to make it wide open for other users. And you can see that it's full accessible for all the people here. So we, now we have the directory. Let me clear my screen. I'm going back to the way that we can mount this file system. And the command is just use mount dash T, which is the type EFS and the EFS ID. And we want to just map it to this directory. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one and try to paste it in the terminal. So here, basically, we are mounting this one to the EFS. But look at here, it's going to just, it is waiting and it's not doing anything. The reason it's not doing anything is the EFS file system, this guy over here, it's not accessible because the security group doesn't let any protocol accessing to it. If you remember, there is a security group here, which is this one. This is the security group. And if I go to the security group tabs here, you can see the default one inbound. There's nothing allowed here. It's allowed for just this security group itself. So what I'm going to do, I mean, the very, very easy thing that we can do, but it's not recommended for the production environment is to open all traffic from anywhere. So this is gonna solve the issue. So let's go back to the terminal to see what is happening now. So this guy is still waiting to access to the EFS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control C and try it again. And now, boom, it's working pretty fast. So if I run DF-H now for disk free, you can see that this is our EFS file system that is mounting to this directory. And what is the capacity? Well, it's not really clear for me, but it's really, really large. So you can put whatever you like here inside this guy here. So I'm going to uh, navigate to the EFS. In here, basically, it's empty right now. I'm going to run touch uh, for creating something uh, as a test file. 
and I'm getting permission denied and it's expected because of the permissions uh, I just change I've just changed the permissions for the directory itself if you remember and I'm going to put dash uh, capital R for recursive changing uh, of the permissions now it should be fine for creating the file inside uh, this EFS directory and you can see that I have the file test file here uh, we can use the VI for editing the file and just put some comments here and save the file and now the file it has some size right it was zero here the size now it's just 15 bytes okay so we've just mounted it to the first server so let's try to mount it to second server so this was just this uh, if I go to the EC2 instance it was this one 2a now I want to use this second one second Linux machine that is in another availability is on US West 2c so let's connect to this box here so the command is same thing I can use the same SSH key I'm going back to the terminal so basically I don't need this one anymore so I'm going to exit and paste this command here because it's the first time I'm getting the certificate error and I am going to basically do the same thing I'm just scrolling up and this is the command that I would like to run sudo yum install with the dash y I'm confirming it that I need this package and I'm hitting enter this machine and then I need to basically create a directory and I name it EFS also in this one and then I just need to mount it and the command of mount is still here and the second machine I can use the same command because the names are the same in terms of the ID of the EFS and now it works pretty fast because the security group is wide open now if I run df-h I can see the mount point here and I can go to EFS basically I run ls-lah and I, I am able to see the test file and if I run cat test file this is the content of the file so basically this is an EFS volume shared between two servers and you can write or read to this, this uh, file system simultaneously at the same time from two servers so this is a good idea for running clusters or whatever solution that you need to have a shared volumes i used to use nfs a lot for the oracle configurations especially for the oracle rack configurations when you have two nodes of databases and they need shared disks and we can create nfs volumes and share it across these two machines for example so the last thing that i want to mention is this efs is basically the native nfs that we can use so even you can see here that is telling you instead of using EFS package you can use NFS utils or NFS common package which is a native NFS client and if you're using this one then you use dash T NFS for the NFS clients and you can you need to configure a bunch of parameters here in order to be able to mount the NFS volume to your directory inside your Linux machine so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one